Born in London in 86, a stash old gent named British Parliament. He loves to wrestle, but he loves one more thing, and helps round the world. He fights in his comments and he argues with fans. It's a problem no one understands. If there's two things he loves, it's getting at, and helps round the world. Drinking fine wine, fighting fanboys, hand hells round the world. Top Hat Gaming Man. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Big Daddy Top Hat here. Welcoming you to a brand new exciting episode of Handhelds Around the World. Fortunately, I pre-recorded a whole entire series of videos focusing around these wonderful devices prior to the global pandemic coming into full swing. This means for all of those of you staying at home at the moment, you can sit back, relax, and let Daddy take you on an exciting ride into the world of handhelds. Yeah! Last month, I found myself at the Winter Gardens in Margate, Kent, in a venue I spent an entire decade making appearances in prior, over the course of my pro wrestling career. In February 2020, I finally returned, but this time on a live panel featuring a number of my fellow, but not as well dressed, full time YouTubers. The Margate Play Expo also featured a panel from my friend Quang, the UK's largest console collector and a gentleman who has been kind enough to let me feature a plethora of these platforms on this channel before. This trip was no different as he graciously gave me the opportunity to spend some time with the PC Engine LT, a game console there has been the demand for for me to cover on here for quite some time. Many people will probably screech in my comment section for even referring to the LT as a handheld for reasons which we shall get into, but the fact that it is a device that is contained in one small unit that can be picked up held in your hands and played, to me very much suggests it is very much a handheld game console. The PC Engine LT, as you will probably know, is one variant of many different iterations of NEC's PC Engine console. In the Western world, Sega had a bit of a reputation for marketing many, many different gaming devices at once, but if they took that idea from anywhere, I can guarantee that it would have been a result of emulating NEC. The PC Engine spent a large portion of its life cycle as Japan's second most popular game console throughout both the 8 and 16 bit era, outselling both the Sega Master System and Sega Mega Drive in Japan. The PC Engine was a huge deal, so it is no surprise that Sega would often look to them for inspiration. NEC were the first ever company to release a console that had a 16-bit video colour encoder prior to the Mega Drive entering the marketplace. The PC Engine also had its own successful CD add-on device years before the Mega Drive 2. And many years before the Sega Nomad came out, NEC released the PC Engine GT, allowing consumers to play their home console games on the go. Astonishingly, the GT came out five years prior to the Nomad. US advertising often presented Sega as a company who does what Nintendo don't, but what they failed to mention was in most cases they were simply copying NEC's hardware tactics. Despite Sega following suit with many of NEC's product releases, Sega would never release a device of their own quite like the PC Engine LT. Amongst NEC's arsenal, as briefly mentioned earlier, they had already released a PC Engine GT, which was originally released back in 1990. The GT was a full-colour handheld that took NEC Hue cards, featured a Game Boy-style form factor, and was battery-powered so it could be played anywhere. As great and ahead of its time that the GT was, it did have its fair share of issues that would result in the device never being quite as popular as the Game Boy. Apart from being very expensive, the console would absolutely devour batteries, meaning that gamers would have very small windows of playtime with the device when on long journeys, and the system was not ideal to be playing PC Engine games on anyway. 
You see, most of the games that were programmed to be played on the PC Engine were designed to be played on the big screen. This would mean gamers would often have difficulty being able to see the game's sprites on the GT small screen, and text-heavy games such as JRPGs in some cases could often be completely unplayable. So, to try and fix this problem and offer consumers another choice of device, this is where the PC Engine LT comes into the equation. Whilst like the GT before it, the LT was an expensive little device to procure, however it had some unique selling points over other handheld gaming devices of its time period. Released in 1991, just one year after the GT, the LT is essentially a traditional PC Engine in form factor but with a built-in flip-up screen and speakers. Essentially, think of the design as a giant Game Boy Advance SP. As aside from the flip screen and speakers, the device also featured a D-pad and buttons built onto the unit. In 1991, the screen on the device was considered very good and was clearly much larger and offered better quality imagery than that of the GT released the previous year. The drawback of course was that this device would require so much juice to run that there was no way this could really run on just batteries, so therefore would require plugging in with an AC adapter in order to even be usable. This may sound annoying, but let's be honest, if you took a device like the PC Engine GT, Sega Game Gear or Atari Lynx on holiday, your batteries would soon end up drained regardless. So, most of your playtime would result in having to plug it in in a hotel room wall. Well, that was my experience at least growing up with a Game Gear anyway. Aside from being a self-contained PC engine with a screen, speakers and the button layout, the device had features that many would have seen as advantages over the GT. This would include the ability to be able to link the system to their PC engine CD-ROM add-on and the ability to play the console with regular PC Engine controllers as well. The device also had an aerial, meaning that it could also be used as a portable television on the go. Something that was far more handy in the days before smartphones and streaming services existed. In fact, you could even plug the LT into a car meaning that owners of this novel device had the opportunity to both play games and watch television whilst on long car journeys. Despite the obvious advantages of owning an LT over many other consoles, sadly the PC Engine LT did not sell very well, which is often put down to the system's high retail price. Whilst the platform sold poorly, I like the fact that companies like NEC and Sega offered their consumers so many different hardware options. It is no wonder really that not all of them would catch on. For gamers on the go, the original Game Boy would prove a far more attractive option. The Game Boy with its cheap price point, long battery life and high quality library of bespoke handheld games made it the winner amongst consumers. For those, though, who wanted to splash their cash and were a little more rock and roll, the PC Engine LT certainly had its advantages. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was the newest episode of Handhelds Around the World. I hope you all enjoyed learning about the PC Engine LT and will once again join me next week when I upload a video covering the beginning of my adventures in Budapest. If there are two things I love, it's handhelds and handhelds round the world. Yeah. Since many people around the world are either being forced or choosing to go into isolation at this moment in time, such as myself, I am going to try to up my weekly schedule to three videos every week from now on. I want to try my utmost to keep you all entertained through this trying time period for humanity. I would love to hear all of your thoughts in the comment section down below on what you thought of today's video and which other handheld devices you would like to see me cover in the future. If you are brand new here, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell to receive all of my uploads straight to your phone. I will see you all again very soon. Finally, my channel is partially funded by the generous donations I receive via Patreon. Patrons can earn a credit and a shout out at the end of these videos. 
These people make working full time on YouTube just that little bit more easy. So I'd like to thank all of you very much for that. Key shout outs go out to Carl Johnson, Sebastian Velis, Sponge Matt BYT, House of the Ted, Synth Spaces, Andrew Bazanski, Asabi Quang DX, Michael Baker, Tom Elliott, Computer Man, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Daniel Daly, Retroversing.com, Dan Barlow Jr., Joel, and all of my other patrons. Thank you very much.